Harry Potter. Charmed. Buffy. Sabrina. Hocus Pocus. The Craft. Witchcraft and the occult have become household items in our society today. While most people do not directly take part in occultic ceremonies, most have interfaced with the occult via television and movies. It's no surprise that the number of people participating in witchcraft is rising rapidly. An article from USA Today entitled, We are living in the middle of a witch moment, hip witchcraft is on the rise in the U.S., says that Sowen, an ancient Celtic festival, has become increasingly popular in recent years as more Americans embrace astrology, the supernatural, and pagan sects such as Wicca. The rise has been fueled largely by young people who have abandoned organized religion in favor of their own spiritual path. The article describes the festival as follows. Witches ring in the day-long holiday at night on October 31st with fire ceremonies, feasts, and building an altar to honor the dead. An article from Newsweek entitled Number of Witches Rises Dramatically Across U.S. As Millennials Reject Christianity says witchcraft and pagan religious practices increased in the U.S., over the past few decades, with millennials turning to alternatives ranging from astrology and tarot cards and away from Christianity and traditionally dominant Abrahamic religions. The number of witches and Americans practicing Wicca religious rituals increased dramatically since the 1990s, with several recent studies indicating that there may be at least 1.5 million witches across the country. Is all the increase in witchcraft a good thing? Though many are leaving Christianity to practice the occult, there are many who believe the two are congruent. Melissa Joan Hart, former star of the hit show Sabrina the Teenage Witch, who now identifies as a Christian, recently appeared on the show Hollywood Medium to contact her dead grandparents. I like that you said that it's a gift from God because as a Christian, I know that there are some things in the Bible about it sure. and whatnot. And so I was wondering what your take on all that is. Absolutely. In looking at the verses of the Bible that speak against mediums, um, historically what a medium was in that day and age and what is spoken against mm -hmm. is very different than a medium that we might understand today. Okay. Notice how the medium assures her that his gift is from God and that the practice of calling up the dead isn't like what it was in the Bible. But is this true? Has contacting the dead through a medium become acceptable in God's eyes? Let's take a look at a story in the Bible where King Saul consults a medium to call up the prophet Samuel from the dead. It appears God may have used a witch to deliver a message to the troubled king. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, starting in verse 3, we read, Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. You see, Israel knew, based on the writings of Moses, that God does not approve of any form of contacting the dead, whether it be by a witch or wizard or medium. Here's a few examples. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18, You shall not suffer a witch to live. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 31, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. As we can see, Saul knew good and well that he was forbidden to contact the dead. But unfortunately, Saul had developed a pattern of disobeying God. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 13 that Saul became impatient waiting for Samuel to arrive to offer sacrifice, and offered it himself which he was forbidden to do. 
1 Samuel chapter 13 verses 13 and 14 says, And Samuel said unto Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. That's King David. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people, because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. King Saul had also disobeyed when God commanded him to exterminate the Amalekites and all their livestock. He did destroy the people, but spared the life of their king and kept the livestock for himself. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verses 10 and 11, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. One important lesson we learn from the story of King Saul is that you cannot have the Holy Spirit and live a continuous life of rebellion. Acts chapter 5 and verse 32 says, And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. It is so important that we obey the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us, because the more we reject his voice, the more we grieve him, and the more we grieve him, the less we hear his voice. Saul had rejected the counsel of the Holy Spirit so much that, like the dial on a radio, he had turned the volume down slowly but surely until he couldn't hear the voice of God anymore. This proved disastrous for Saul when it came time for Israel to fight the Philistines. Continuing on, verses 5 through 7 reads, And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Things go from bad to worse as Saul, instead of confessing his sins and turning to the Lord with a repentant heart, decides to see a witch so that he might contact the spirit of Samuel. Now, at first, the witch is hesitant to call up Samuel because of the decree that had gone out by King Saul that all those who practice spiritism should be killed. But King Saul assures her, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Now it appears that the witch was successful in bringing up Samuel from the dead, for we read, and when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground, and bowed himself. Now, Saul was hoping for Samuel to give him advice on how to deal with the Philistines, but what he got instead was a message of despair. Samuel said, For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor, David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord nor execute his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with you into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also deliver the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. When Saul heard this, he fell flat on the ground in anguish. There was no hope left in him. Shortly after this, the Philistines came to battle Israel and began to prevail against them, killing all of Saul's sons. Saul, in a moment of desperation and panic, committed suicide, sealing his fate as a lost man. So, 
Was this really Samuel who spoke to Saul? Did God really use a witch to communicate with his people? The answer is no. God would not do such a thing. He had given command after command to Israel, warning them not to contact witches or call up the dead. We read that when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by the prophets. Would God instead consent to answer Saul by a witch? Definitely not. A far better explanation is that this was not Samuel at all, but a fallen angel posing as Samuel. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. That means that angels have the ability to imitate human beings. If God's angels take human form to help people, it stands to reason that Satan's angels take human form to deceive people. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. It's also important to realize that only God has the ability to resurrect the dead. So the very idea that witches call up actual people is a deception of Satan. If he can make someone believe that they are speaking to their deceased loved one, he can play on their emotions and get them to do just about anything. In the case of King Saul, it was the message of despair that led to his downfall. If the real Samuel was alive and God had permitted him to counsel Saul on this issue, the message would have likely been more hopeful. Usually prophets, though quick to give a stern rebuke, also bring a message of hope. Perhaps Samuel would have told Saul that if he repented of his disobedience, God would help him again. Since God sometimes leaves us be so that we might seek him in repentance. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 8 says, and a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Lastly, the Bible actually tells us plainly that God was not behind this alleged resurrection of Samuel. First Chronicles chapter 10 and verses 13 and 14 says, So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. The story of King Saul and the witch of Endor is so important because many today are being deceived by Satan and his angels posing as loved ones or familiar spirits. We must understand that God gave us the Bible to protect us from such deceptions. We're told in Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 and 20, And when they say to you, Seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. The law and the testimony is another way of saying the Bible. You see, we can know if something is from God or from Satan by simply reading his word and hiding it in our heart. Saul could have avoided the disaster that came of seeing a witch if he would have used biblical-based discretion. He should have asked himself, would God use a witch to communicate with me even though his word unequivocally speaks against it? But instead, Saul followed the rules of his own heart and wound up lost forever. Remember this, God speaks to us through his word, the Bible, not through witches, wizards, or mediums. Those things are an abomination to him, and partaking in them could be our downfall. God gave his son Jesus so that any time we are in trouble, if we are willing to humble ourselves and come to him, he can guide us through the storm and into an eternal life spent with God. If you have been blessed by this video and would like to bless our ministry, please consider making a donation using the link below. God bless.